<laughs> Hello. Um, I just wanted to crank out a super quick video here. Uh, I'll do longer form videos on this in the future. I just wanted people to see this kind of quickly. Um, I'm calling this um, tab the new Tableau Semantics for Tableau OGs. The reason I'm doing this is uh, for uh, a lot of people in the Tableau community that have been using Tableau for a while, I think are a little confused um, and maybe even anxious about uh, Tableau semantics. So I just wanted to kind of alleviate those fears, but also put where semantics is kind of in its place. Um, what's important instead of a normal forward-looking statement is I just want to be clear that I don't work for Salesforce and don't speak for Salesforce or Tableau product direction. I'm just a Tableau ambassador who thinks and spends way too much time on data modeling in Tableau. Um, uh, however, I'm also um, a data cloud certified consultant, so uh, I can speak to data, data cloud as well at a fairly uh, detailed level. And again, we might do a future video on that, depending on, on how much people enjoy these videos or get value out of these videos, more importantly. So I will talk a little bit in speculation about Tableau future, but again, it's speculation. Let's be clear on that. Um, I did want to bust three myths before we get into the demo, and it's going to be almost all demo. Um, the first is I need to be in, and I think it's an implied existing Salesforce user or customer to use Tableau Next. Uh, it's, it's not strictly true. Um, for sure, and I'm not trying to split hairs, so I just want to be clear on it, is think about Tableau Cloud today. Tableau Cloud's a platform, and on that platform, you can create published data sources, workbooks, and flows. And then, of course, there's data assets and some other things, um, and lots of stuff you can configure. Tableau Cloud and Tableau Server um, are platforms. So they're very similar platforms. One Tableau hosts for you, the other one um, you host for yourself. Tableau Next is not built on that platform. It is built on the Salesforce platform. However, um, the Salesforce platform supports a lot of things like Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, uh, Flows, Marketing Cloud, like lots of stuff on that platform. Um, and so, you, but if you buy tap, the Tableau Plus license, it's certainly my understanding um, that you get Data Cloud, which is on the, on the Salesforce platform, which you need, and Tableau Next. So you don't need other Salesforce. So you could be new to Salesforce uh, and get that, but it's definitely a different platform uh, completely than the Tableau um, cloud or server platform that you're used to today. The second thing I hear a lot is Tableau semantics sounds really complicated. Why does Tableau need semantics? Uh, I mean, this is what we're gonna show today, but Tableau already has a semantic layer uh, in the say classic product uh, of cloud and server, um, which are published data sources. So. Uh, I actually think that Tableau is being smart labeling this product Tableau Semantics because semantics are very important. Uh, if done right, um, these semantics are data models. We can they're not we can use them basically interchangeably. I would say, um, uh, and uh, and um, uh, and that's important or whatever because what they are is they're a set of rules that an engine can use uh, heuristics against to uh, generate SQL queries. So why it's important is if you have a good semantic model, for example, you can put an agent against it. You can put a um, uh, you know metrics against it, kind of like Tableau Pulse. It'd be net metrics in the new product or or data visualizations, and then it's the same data model. So you should get the same answer for each one of those because the semantic model is the important part that tells them all uh, what the context is of your data and how to go get it. So again, it's not really new though. It's just that Tableau didn't talk about their published data sources as a semantic layer. And I think they should have. A lot of people have probably heard me say that before because it's very powerful compared to other traditional kind of BI tools, uh, including Power BI's. Um, the last one is this myth that to get new features, keep up with Tableau generally, I'm going to have to move to Tableau next. Again, I'm not speaking on behalf of the company, but this is Ryan Atte, the CEO of Tableau Slide from um, Tableau Conference. And it was pretty clear to me to interpret the Tableau server prep cloud and desktop, if I said that right, uh, will continue on in the future. There'll be interoperability with Tableau Next. They talked about a couple of those things specifically around semantics, like bringing semantic models into um, Tableau uh, Cloud, and, Cloud at least, um, and uh, and vice versa. As an example, and I'm sure there'll probably be more. So, but I think what they'll do, at least for some period of time, and probably 
years will be um, that there'll be those two different platforms, the traditional platform and um, and the platform built on the Salesforce platform, or sorry, the, the product built on the Salesforce platform that uh, has a number of components and is called uh, Tableau Next. So again, hopefully alleviated those myths. Um, so certainly there is Tableau uh, Salesforce platform at play here, but again, you could be a net new customer and only do this and use it for sure. Equally though, um, if you you don't have to move to this to get new features, they're still gonna continue to invest. Uh, Souther Jones said for main stage, uh, I can't remember the exact number, more than 50% of the resources um, that, uh, that are in the Tableau org from a development perspective are on the classic product. I can't remember his exact number, but um, you can find that on uh, Tableau Plus if you watch the keynote. Um, that's not, not mostly what I wanted to show today, though. What I wanted to jump into um, is the demo, and uh, you know that's where we're gonna what we really want to show. So, um, what you're looking at right now is um, Tableau. Uh, sorry, hmm, uh, is you're looking at Data Cloud. So this is Data Cloud. It's built on the Salesforce platform. Um, you can think about it kind of as like a, a much more robust hyper is to the existing Tableau platform. Now, hyper is part of it and there's a lot more to it, but basically it's a data store um, for data that we're going to access in, in, in Tableau. The difference in Tableau Next, the difference is that uh, Tableau Next uh, needs its data to be, at least today, to be in Salesforce or uh, standard objects or um, data cloud, I think data cloud uh, will be the big one. Now, it's not a big deal because you can point data cloud to other data sources, just map them through data cloud. It's called zero copy. You don't have to move your data in. Um, and if you want to ingest files like CSVs, you can do that into data cloud just like you can to hyper. So again, it's, it's a bit of a wash if a heavier platform. And again, if people want it, I'm happy to do a video on data cloud uh, from the perspective of how you might think about it as a traditional Tableau user slash OG. Um, I just wanted to quickly do a, a super quick recap. I would recommend watching the data modeling masterclass that um, uh, uh, the Tim and I did on his Tableau Tim channel. Um, I think it shows it off. But one thing we did in it, and it's a crutch as Tableau OGs ourselves, uh, you know, people have been using Tableau for a long time, uh, to go to Tableau desktop to do those things. But in reality, if I was taking, um, if I was working with a company that had, like we laid out, like if the bookstore company were like Amazon with checkouts and sales like uh, Kindle and Amazon.com and Audible. Um, if I was working with a company of like that, of that size, um, what I would do, and I do as a consultant all the time, is I don't use Tableau Desktop. I create those models first and completely separate from workbooks so we can enable Explorers, we can enable Tableau Plus, and, um, and then, you know, your standard still people who create Tableau workbooks and great visualizations, but we standardize published data sources separately because it's way more scalable and you can govern it better and you're not reduplicating effort, right? And I would do that in the web client, right? So I wouldn't do this typically in Tableau Desktop and it's here called a published data source. Again, published data source is really a semantic model. Um, and I'm gonna uh, come in here and you'll notice that if you think about it, you can connect to all kinds of things here, including data cloud, by the way. So even without Tableau semantics, we'll be here one day to connect through, but um, you can connect directly to data cloud today. Um, Hopefully this remembers where I put them. Um, should have had the setup to go first. So I'm just gonna quickly come down to my desktop. Oh, I could go even quicker. Uh, go into my bookshop files here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna bother with the union. I'll also show that in another video if you want. I just don't wanna get bogged down in it. So we're just gonna take Q1 sales. Uh, and again, if you watch the video with Tim, um, what we did then is we came here and then uh, we used Excel files. So it was easier to pull it in. But if you're using flat files like CSVs like this, what we would do is a little bit more manual. You'd come back and you have to connect. Uh, if you want to see sales, you have to connect through addition. Um, again, I could either drag and drop that uh, or double click it. Uh, and then if I click in, of course, it's Tableau. So I can just say, what are the fields it relates on? Um, and then one more time, I'm just going to bring this in just to, again, this is just a super quick recap to show you what I would actually do. I wouldn't do it in desktop. I would do it here. Uh, and then because they're flat files, I would almost certainly extract it, 
right? If we wanted to test it, we could come over to our scratch pad. Um, this will take a second to build um, it. And then from our scratch pad, um, we could take a look around, uh, see if it gave us the answers we wanted, and then we would publish it. And then we would be able to use that in Tableau. Again, if we made it more robust, we'd be able to use that in Tableau Plus. And uh, we'd be able to, people would be able to use it to create workbooks, whether they were creators or explorers. Another great way to save money candidly, because now explorers can do a lot of the stuff that, you, that people think they need creators to do, because of course, explorers can create workbooks off, um, off published data sources. So um, this is when this is done, it's going to come up and then I'm going to publish it. Um, are we going to wait much longer? I don't know if it's value. I can I can jump back to this, but you, you probably know the next steps anyway, which are I have to publish this data source so that people can use it and find it. Let's look at how this works in Tableau Semantics, since that's the reason you're here. So you'll notice that Semantic Layer actually exists in um, uh, in inside uh, Data Cloud. So I can create it here, right? Like, uh, because it's GA since April, 2025, right? Or, um, and it's just a beta right now, but, um, and I should mention, this is what I mean by Salesforce as a platform. It has all these apps, but you could think of apps roughly as, you know, new flow, new flow, um, new data source, new workbook, except there's a lot more, including what people probably think mostly of uh, Salesforce's sales clouds on this org I'm using, but it wouldn't have to be there. You could have nothing here about data cloud and Tableau Next, and I could go into Tableau Next um, and create a semantic model there. That might make sense in another video, but for now, I'm just gonna crank out uh, a new model here, right? And then uh, I can start with a new model. I can create from an existing model or I can create from a data kit. If I uh, if I go here, um, what I've already done, I think they're here already. Uh, uh, if I, uh, I'll talk about these in the future, but if we do a data cloud one on the difference between a data model object or DMO and uh, and a DLO, and even what a calculated insight is, but we're, we're going to use DLOs. Um, so what DLOs are, are uh, data-like objects. So you can think of this process as just a little, um, it backwards to the Tableau one, literally, and that in Tableau, we bring in those flat files, those CSVs, and then we create an extract. Tableau kind of sucks them in, uh, each has their own table um, into, um, uh, into Hyper, and then Hyper decides how to join those at runtime. So they're each a table in the Hyper database. In this case, um, they're in the, they're brought into uh, Data Cloud. It's a data lake host, but it's still, I mean, if you're an analyst, data warehouse, data lake house, it doesn't super matter um, at that level of detail. So I already uploaded these files, um, which I could have showed you how, but it's pretty simple. You just upload them first. So you upload them first as opposed to in Tableau. Tableau uploads them when you like when you go create extract. So uh, I'm going to start with sales Q1, but I can also say um, that, uh, you know, I could also find addition, which I uploaded, and... Uh, I could find book was the last one. So I already uploaded these uh, and then I'm going to go next, right? And then this could be our bookstore uh, semantic model, right? And again, I could create these from within Tableau next when it comes out, but I could also create it here. What it's going to do uh, is it's going to launch this, which is part of Tableau next, um, again, sitting on top of data cloud. Uh, and now you'll notice one thing it does um, is that right away, uh, that AI uh, has suggestions on how to bring these tables together, which is kind of neat. Like we don't, um, Tableau, if you watch that other video, Tim and I did, if the, the field names are the same in the two, uh, it'll figure them out dynamically, it doesn't even need AI, right? But here, if I pick AI, um, we could see if it does it. It's pretty early. I don't think it got it kind of right here. Um, it It didn't, so I'm going to ignore that one. I didn't get it right. Do you know what I mean? I would expect this to get better over time. Um, it's interesting. I do want to connect to ISBN on this side, ISBN on this side, 
it got this one wrong. So I am going to ignore this one and ignore this one. So again, I would expect them to get better over time. It's a brand new feature. At least you see it's there, right? So, um, but for now, anyway, we're analysts, we're control freaks. I'm not even sure I would use that thing. We'll see how good it gets. But what I want to do is I just want to create a relationship between these, the same as I would in Tableau. So I want to create, as you remember, we had sales to addition to book, right? So I just say, I want this to this. And then I just tell it the fields. Um, if you remember, it's the ISBN number. So I go ISBN, IS, whoops, I clear this out and I go ISBN. And then um, and then an equal operator, again, like Tableau can do whatever. And then when I'm done, you can say, this is kind of neat. In Tableau Classic, you would have to upper them, right? Or not. So, you know, you have a choice here of whether you want them to be, um, Distinct or not, kind of a neat little feature. Uh, otherwise, we'll see, once I make this, um, we'll see down here that we get a preview of each table, very similar to Tableau Classic. It's just the, the UX is ever so slightly different down here. So um, I'm just going to apply this because I like this one. It works, right? Um, and then the next thing I can do is uh, I can come in here and create a relationship to book, right? And if um, you remember the other one, I just come in here, doesn't get it right, but it is a uh, title, I think, right? Isn't it? Um, it is, this is good when you forget yourself, right? Um, do, 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 do. Book ID, sorry. And on this side, it's gonna be book ID. So again, this is the same way they joined in Tableau, classic, exact same uh, works. I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna go apply. And what's kind of neat, um, is that now I can come up here and I can test my model. But again, that's the same model. Um, for all intents and purposes, exact same model, it's gonna behave the same way as what we built in Tableau Classic. So you see, but what's kind of neat is I can actually test things here almost like um, you can in like a query analyzer or something. I find when I'm working with new Tableau clients and they're used to database stuff to test this. So like, oh, I wanna test this right away. And in Tableau, I'm like, click on a sheet and then you drag and drop. Everyone knows how to do that. But they're used to this kind of format, not that one's better than the other. But here, if we wanted to know book titles and there aren't a lot of measures in here, but if we wanted to go, um, what's the discount by book title? So books here, discounts over here. Um, if we run this, it will return um, all the, it'll basically do the join that we needed to do at runtime through addition uh, to get me the discount. Uh, summed, right, for every book. And again, uh, we can play with that. So kind of neat. And then I could even copy my SQL query here. Um, to get my SQL query in Tableau, I would have to run a performance analyzer and grab it uh, and grab it on the performance workbooks that it, um, that it created. So it's pretty slick. I could take that SQL and I could actually, I didn't even trust this. I could run that, um, the SQL that this uh, little test did down here as well. And then now that we have this, and I'm going to show this in another video once the product um, is fully GA, um, which is how we take this model and build metrics, which are the equivalent to Tableau Pulse, um, how to build visualizations, which are like sheets and dashboards, um, and um, also how to um, uh, use concierge against it when it's ready, which is a way to kind of interrogate and ask questions of your data, um, which again, you saw that very quickly at Tableau Conference. So, but for now, I'm gonna leave this here. Hopefully I left everyone helped out with some clarification around this, which is it's a different platform, but it's very, very similar. Um, uh, although the UX is a bit different, the concepts aren't going to be uh, that hard to move from building published data sources in Tableau to building semantic models in Tableau Next. Hope you found this helpful. And if you did, uh, let me know, like it, um, hit me up on LinkedIn or down below. The important part is uh, I won't, I'll, I'll keep creating these if you find them useful. Again, this one was just a quick and dirty one. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions.